On December 2, 2005, the Armwood football team faced the challenge of a lifetime. Trailing Miami Booker T. Washington with time running out in the Class 4A state semifinals, it appeared as though the Hawks' bid for a third straight championship game appearance would die on the worn-out field at Dade County's Traz Powell Stadium. But instead of melting under the intense heat of the moment, Armwood kept its cool and delivered a shocking blow to the crowd of better than 10,000. 10 plays, 80 yards, 137 seconds. It was a drive for the ages. Welcome, Prep Football fans. My name is Joe Smith, St. Petersburg Times and TampaBay.com. And we're joined here in our Friday Night Rewind set by Armwood Offensive Coordinator Chris Taylor. He was calling the plays that magical night at Traz Powell Stadium in Miami. Booker just scored to go 34-29 with less than three minutes to go. But to go 80 yards, take me there. Well, first of all, we didn't start planning what to do right as we ran out onto the field. We started planning when Booker was uh, driving to score for their go-ahead touchdown, and our assistants and the offense had gathered on the sideline, mapped out what we were going to do our first three plays, uh, and talked about what we wanted to do in the two-minute out. And so the first thing we wanted to do was try to capitalize on the uh, trick play that we had run against them a year before. We knew they had seen it on film time and time again. So we ran a play that was meant to look like the same little quick hitch, uh, but the receiver didn't quite go out far enough. He didn't go all the way out to, to threaten onto the corner. You can see here he turns up a little too soon, so he gets covered, and quarterback Justin Hickman makes a great read, throws the ball to Curtis Thompson, who then was left uncovered for a little quick gain, uh, but unfortunately that was nowhere close to a first down. Uh, so we then lined up, ran the second play that we had planned. People call them trick plays, but we practice them every week, so we just think of them as, as plays for us. We're going to run the hook and ladder, and uh, Matt Brevy does a great job, uh, pitches the ball out, but, uh, and we get the first down here, which is what we needed. It stopped the clock and allowed us to line up and play our next down. Uh, this next down here, we're going to run a bubble screen and try to throw the slant behind it. And you can see Booker T does a terrific job covering the slant. And uh, quarterback Justin Hickman grabs the ball, dives up into the line, gets what he can, and, uh, and calls the next play. Uh, he calls this next play here. Booker does a great job covering it again. Uh, Justin throws the ball out of bounds, trying to stop the clock and uh, give us a chance to play again. Now they had covered that bubble screen before, uh, they had covered the slant before, so we thought this time we'll go back to the bubble screen and actually throw it. And uh, Eric Smith does what Eric Smith does, which is make people miss. He gets the first down for us, gives us a chance, but now there's 46 seconds left and, uh, and we're sweating it. Actually, I think he leaves us just short of the first down. And, uh, and so now we've got to get the first down uh, here and uh, it's fourth and two. We're gonna run our best play, which is, which is our beer play. And people would think, oh, 46 seconds left, you can't run the ball, but we do run the ball because uh, we know that the clock is gonna stop on first down, which it does, but now we're pressed for time. Uh, there's 40 seconds left. We got over half the field to go. We're gonna run a seams type play. We've been throwing this to Lance Tillerson all, all night. But this time, Justin sees that Eric is open over the middle. He throws it in there. Eric makes a terrific catch in traffic. Uh, Booker T's, they're smart. This time, they're going to cover Eric Smith because we're going to run what looks like the same play, but it's a little bit different. And the difference uh, ends up being that Lance ends up being open underneath the safety. He catches the ball, makes three, four, five people miss, and uh, it gets us all the way down to the eight yard line. Now we're looking with just seconds left in less than the teens. Uh, the clock is stopped. Um, Lance, isn't he a great story? A kid from New Orleans and the, and the current train, Katrina. Oh, if this isn't what dreams are coming true is all about, you know, he, he's coming from Slidell, Louisiana. His school was under eight feet of mud and, and water. And, and uh, you know, we, we run up to the line there and we, rather than clock it, we throw it in the corner of the end zone uh, rather than throwing it at the ground. And we take a chance with Matt Brevy going against their great corner, Chavez Grant, who now plays for uh, the University of Miami. And, uh, but now the clock has stopped and we can utilize Lance who is a, a great athlete. They had a corner who was a little bit shorter and we think we're going to throw the fade pass in the corner to uh, our tall strong receiver and, uh, and he does a terrific job, catches that ball, eight seconds left in the game. You guys go up there, um, the score of 35-34, you line up for the two point conversion and looks like it's only eight five, six, seven people on the field for Booker T. What was going on there? Oh, they were devastated. And we just ran it in for the two-point conversion. Uh, we were jubilant, and I don't think I've ever seen more heartbreak than I was seeing on their sideline. Emotions for Booker T. I mean, reports in the scene were talking about how, you know, how much were being thrown, and there was, you know, 
uh, chili just taking their pom poms. I mean, and your side must have been just complete and utter, you know, just like. You know, oh, you know, to, to have a final score 37 34, somehow we had come back. You know, the, the, the coaches, the players were devastated. Our players were jubilant, and yet they were drained too emotionally. You know, they were so workmanlike. They were just doing their reps like they had in practice all the time. We practiced that kind of a two minute drill every Thursday. That's what we do. And I looked over, and there's Justin Hickman on the, on the bench, and he's sitting there, and he had been so cool and so calm the whole game. And tears are streaming down his face, just streaming down his face. And this is a really tough kid. And uh, you know what? It made tears stream down my face, you know? And suddenly you had Booker T kids crying and you had Armwood kids crying. And uh, you know, I think that's why it's such a, uh, a rivalry of mutual respect, because they're tough and we're tough and we know both teams are gonna play until the whistle. Well, we'll see how much magic uh, Chris Taylor has up his sleeve this Friday when Armwood faces Booker T Washington in the Class 4A state semifinal, playing for the fourth time in five years. And we'll see if they can move on. Thanks a lot, Chris, for being in here. Thank you, Joe.